Now, I got this where it, it'll hold now. Was there mistakes made? Lots. I can tell you right now, I jumped into this just like I would anything else, thinking, how hard could this be? <laughs> Welding aluminum is a whole nother game. And overhead, on top of that, I'm not welding down, I'm overhead. So thank God I, I had the fiberglass blanket down, but man, it was just uh, splattering everywhere. And on top of that, I couldn't find one of my welding gloves, so you notice I was welding with one. Just because I wanted to get it done, I don't recommend anybody does that. I, in, I, karma, instant karma, because I wasn't wearing a glove, I burnt my hand, and then uh, I didn't have long sleeves on. And uh, a spall landed on my bicep and burned it too. So I got what I deserved. Just lesson learned, you guys. Don't do that. This is horrendous looking. It's horrible looking. I'm going to grind it down some. Try to make it look a little bit better. I'm going to slap some uh, paint on there. But it is aluminum. It's not going to rust. Um, put some self-etching primer on there so it has something to grip to. But The second problem I had was the first time I welded it, which was when I was recording, um... I shut the hood and the welds must have shrank and bent the hood again. When I put it down, it was bowed really bad all over again. So then I cut pieces of an old intake. I thought it was off that uh, SS, Cobalt SS. Uh, cut chunks off of that and then patched them in here. And then I would spot weld one spot and then like kind of move around. And then I would use an air wand, blow air on it to cool it down. And even after all that, it bowed again not near as bad but it still bowed so i got on top of the hood and stood on top of it and uh it bent it back down and did not crack any of my welds uh the first time i did that i stood on it and it cracked the welds and uh then it bowed back in the, to the shape i wanted but now it might actually stay yeah better than nothing it's pretty close little bit off i can feel a little bit of a you know a raise in it but not near what it was and uh i gotta do a little body work here anyways that's where i was standing on it so kind of got it back to shape yeah I, I i need a lot of practice when it comes to that and plus it's i've just never welded aluminum before so i just i think i was acting like it was steel and it just it's not the same so thank God it's not a piece that you can see. So when you open the hood, yes, you can see it. But on top of the hood, you can't see it. Eventually, we might get a new hood. But you know, I'm, I'm dealing with what I got. So uh, this is we're going to repaint this hood. It'll be all right. But I stayed out here way later than I wanted to tonight. Um, I did get the black lug nuts. I didn't put those on yet. And uh, we got all the bumper brackets and that plastic piece. So... We can refit everything up with the right pieces on it. I'll leave the fog lights out because I got paint too. So we got the paint to do this. I got the clear. I got everything. I should have everything. I say that and then I find something else. But yeah. And I think we'll try this on the hood. Maybe not the front, but right here. I think we ought to be able to get a good flat surface with that. But I'm off to bed for tonight. And I got more porch work tomorrow, so I don't know if I'm going to get into this tomorrow. But it'll be the next clip you see whenever. We'll update you. This is a couple days later. Mm-hmm. Picked this thing up at Lowe's. We were going to do a retractable awning, but this thing was pretty nice. The only thing is it takes up that space where the water jugs are, but you can tilt this, you can move it. It's got LED lighting. There's a switch over here. It's real dim. Can barely tell right now. At nighttime, it actually makes a decent amount of light. It's pretty neat. It's after my welding fiasco. I haven't really been in the mood to come out here, but I'm gonna do it today because there's something I forgot to do that I should have did very first thing and that was remove the seat belts and the crash module because they need to get done because if i don't have those done even if i get this done i can't get it to pass um we have that box right there that's black sealer black paint and more clear coat i have plenty of clear but i got more since we're going to be doing 
all of that back there. I don't know if that's going to be before the inspection or not, but paint here. I think we're going to do we're going to do that separate from the painting up front. I got to paint the bumper. Oh, let's uh, zoom out. I got to paint the bumper. Um, I'm going to paint this piece. You guys tell me that piece is an add-on. It comes off of there, and I am going to remove it off of this. Do you think I should go without that? Honestly, I think I'm going to leave it because it's like. You know, that's Chevy's thing. They have a bar across the front. Um, but I'm, I am going to paint it black, and these are going black. I've probably said that multiple times, but I'm not painting these. This is going to be a wrap. And I don't know, if I don't add that in, do I put that in there? I don't know that I even want to, I don't know if I want to put that in. It's kind of dirty. It's chipped up. It Like in the accident, it's got some marks in it and stuff. So, not quite perfect. I don't know, it might clean up nice, but I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. But, I'm, before I do the body work, get those seat belts out in the crash module. I, got, I just got to get that done. Alright, so Super Procrastinator here. Still haven't done the seat belts. I got to move the truck so I can get into it, but that's extra wiring I cut out. Um, this is the power to the subs back there, and uh, they had that big terminal right there on this little nut. Well, right here, these are all power terminals in here, so I'm going to route this in here. Put a nut on that. That's a spare terminal that's not being used so that this isn't, like, taken up. Plus, then I found out the, the switches inside there for the air horns. They were lit up all the time. Well... This is the power wire for those lights. <laughs> and they had that one there. So the power was always on. I am I honestly don't even think I want the lights. I could run this to a key on power. But I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to eliminate that. Um, easiest way to get key on power would be to run this wire back through this loom. Or separate over there to the fuse box and then find a key on power over there i'm not doing it um uh, i'm just gonna leave that off so we don't have to worry about draining the battery and that and i put the lugs on and i torqued them down and they look 10 times better so we're gonna I, I did put the steering wheel bag in there and i have to have everything disconnected to do this but i gotta move the truck why did okay I <laughs> gotta hook everything back up. Dur -dur -dur. All right, so you got the truck moved. I'm gonna start on the hard one first. This one's pulled tight. Now we do have a little bit of give because I can push this seat back, which will pull a little bit of slack out of that, but I still, even pushing it back, you take this bolt out, that doesn't release it. They have hooks and they hook over top of each other, so they had to be pulled apart so you can get those latches apart. So I don't know that that's even going to work for us. Where another place is, is up here in this this trim up top. I heard noises and I come over here and somebody threw a perfectly good wife away. Hey, what are you doing in there? I'm trying to I'm not ready to throw you out yet. There you go. Yeah, bounce it. That's another thing that's going to suck, but it kind of broke this trim because of how tight this is. And there's a plastic cap that goes over that, and it broke it too. So, I don't know if I can find those pieces, but we're going to live with it for right now. Um, I got this cover off. I just pulled it, and it came right out. Um, what is this stuff? Ew. Um, so, there's one bolt right there, which I can get to with a wrench. But that's not, I don't believe that's going to release this thing. I th I'm sure there's another bolt in it. But the reason I couldn't get the top off is because I'm sure there's anchor bolts inside of this handle. Huh. Well, let me loosen that and see if uh, this comes loose. I don't think one bolt would be what holds that in, but I, don't know, I could be totally wrong. I've been wrong once before, or twice, or three times, or any time I'm arguing with my wife, I've been wrong. 
Oh, I see it now, and it's gonna definitely release it. Now, I just like took a whole bunch of stuff off. It didn't need to come off. It's a big Torx head right here, and I have that somewhere in my toolbox. So, let me go grab that, and that ought to release the pressure off of this. So, to make this job that much easier. All right, let's do that. It's a T50. So, get yourself out a big old ratchet. In fact, the one, the extendable ones I got, that's what you want. I don't know if it's going to do it or not, but let's see. Right, so a little thing on these what goes bad in these whenever there's an accident is there's this right here's where your airbag plug goes in when it sends the signal there's like a co2 cartridge in here kind of like that an explosive cartridge and when it blows it runs a like a ram into the ratchet mechanism in this and locks it in place and that's why your seat belts get tight um then, on top of that, this part right here, like I said, it, how it, it hooks in, this is latched into an anchor on the seat. So I still have to take the plastic cover off of the seat there, and there's a charge in there hooked to this anchor. And whenever it blows, it pulls this tight, so it pulls your seat belt even tighter on you. So there's two charges that have to be reset in these things. Um, they put like a new cartridge in or, or some something or other like that and uh, It resets them and then the crash module too. I don't know what they do with that But they hook that up to a computer of some sort and clear the codes out of it But I need to get the one out of the seat yet, and then I still have to do the driver's side and I got the driver's uh, Steering wheel bag so after I get this anchor out of the seat I think I'm gonna do the steering wheel bag first Honestly, I really like changing the steering wheel bike. I don't know why I enjoy doing that. I, just, I don't know. I just like it. Now see, here's the anchor that goes in the seat. There's a charge in here. When it explodes, it pulls a cable inside of here. As you can see, that cable right there, it goes down in, wraps around, and it goes into here. So when that explodes, it pulls this cable, pulls this cable, and uh, in return, pulls your seatbelt down tight on you. Time to send these puppies out. Weird. That I like doing steering wheel bags. I, I don't know. Anyway, steering wheel bags, most of them, not saying all of them, have holes in it around the outside that releases the bag. This one, oh, does it not have holes? Normally they have holes in them. It's got marks where there should be holes. I guess you just got to stick your screwdriver in through it. You just gotta dig around until you find the release pin. I have not found it yet. Just use a straight screwdriver. Sometimes one side will release easier than the other. Also on these Chevys, now that I, I noticed this, you'll know if your steering wheel bag was replaced because this is foam 
and there's no holes in it. They just have marks there where, uh, where you stick it in. Oh, use a little bit of pressure, pull on it. That's why it didn't, it was catching. Yeah, just got to pull on it. That's what it was. Normally when you do that and you push in on it, they'll just spring loose. But this actually has, I was looking at this one, it has like actual clips to kind of hold it in place. So it didn't want to release out of them. That's these things right here. And then you just pop these with a pick. If they didn't burn, mine might have burnt. Mm. They might have melted. They melt sometimes. And I think these ones did. Which means we're not going to replace this one yet. Mmm. Hmm. I think I might have bought replacement ones. I'm gonna have, yeah, they're melted. I see it now. They're stuck to the bag. We might have to cut these off. I gotta look and see if I have any of these connectors. This is where junkyard parts are really good because sometimes they'll just cut them off and send them with them. Uh, or if you go to a junkyard and you get one, you can just cut them off. And, and take them with you. So, I want to look around. I think I might have some plugs here, but I'm not sure yet. I lucked out. Okay, so you know I said when I did the Elantra that the clock spring needed to be replaced in it. I did that. It did clear his uh, SRS light. Check it out. <laughs> Two good plugs. So, I'm going to take these off of here and wire them into that. And uh, we should be good. Yeah, when these ones go off, they get so hot back here that the plugs melt into them, and I didn't even think of that. I did order more of the plugs for this. I ordered a couple more sets, so I have them around the shop here. It's in there. Feels good. And uh, they plugged in and snapped in tight, and I have no doubt that's going to be fine. Now, I don't know where the crash module is in this thing, so excuse me while I look that up. Um, and I do have to do another seat belt. We need to find the crash module. Normally... It's somewhere in the center. It might be under the seat right here. Might be under the seat over there. I don't know. Might be up under the dash. Let me look it up. All right, simple enough. It's under the center console here. There are four covers that need to come off in all four corners. And there's four 15 millimeter bolts. And then that will lift off. And it's sitting on the floor underneath there. Make sure your battery is disconnected when you start pulling that out of there. Because they said that... It has um, sensors in it. If it detects that it's like if you flip it over and the battery is connected, it's going to think that the vehicle is flipping over and it's going to deploy all your airbags. You do not want that. So I am going to go disconnect the negative on the battery as well just to be extra safe. And then we'll get into this. The covers, you can see one right there maybe you can't but there's one right there and it's going to be hard to get to since my this is a power seat but then the other ones are in the back and uh we'll go from there and there it goes i think there's one of them
Now, I still have yet to get the driver's seat belt out, but there's no tension on it. It's not really going to be a problem. It didn't break anything over there either since there was no tension on it. Must have had that seat belt pulled out pretty far, or there was a big guy sitting in there that that's why it's not tight. Not to make fun of big people, but that's just where it got tight. This one got tight. There's nobody in there, and it locked up. So that's why it was so tight where it was at. Oh, GM's crash modules. All the other ones I've done have been all metal. This thing's all plastic. Which, honestly, I don't understand why it needs to be all metal, but there it is. So I got... I'm going to look and see what my best deal is. I use Safety Restore normally when I get my seatbelts uh, and crash modules reset. And I found that it's normally cheaper if you look them up on eBay and go through that way. So I'm going to look these up. I'll let you know what kind of price I find. Uh, but I still need to get this other seatbelt out. I'm going to do that later in the week. I'll get back to you when I get to that. So I actually uh, didn't wait and do this later in the week. I was just like, I'm just going to do this now. This is the passenger side. This is the driver's side. I think they both blue. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. One of them shorter than the other one. Hmm. So it looks as though possibly the passenger side one's okay. You see how it's shorter? The driver's one? I don't know. I don't know how you can tell the difference. Looking down in, I can see that the plunger pulled out further on the driver's side than on the passenger side. I don't know. I'm sending them both in regardless to be done. And then these normally sound like a bunch of rattly ball bearings or something in there normally when they deploy. All right, guys. So now I have a product review. Um, this is like a week later. I did get those plastic panels for on the passenger seat that broke when the seat belt uh, got tight. And uh, this little piece here, this little plastic cover that I said was missing, I ordered it and they canceled my order and this is on back order indefinitely but the same exact part number is on a Cadillac the only thing different is it has like a felt sticker on it but it's the same exact part number so it should in sense work so let's check it out all right so here's the back of that seatbelt piece which I didn't even realize it's busted but it's in enough of a shape that it's gonna be on the back side of the seatbelt you're not gonna see that and it, it, the, the, the bottom part of it is broken as well. But let me see if this piece, it should clip on because same part number. And there you go. It, it does work. It doesn't fit the best since this back piece is busted. But that's still going to cover the seat bone. It's not going to be an eyesore. And then here is my new panel for the seat. They weren't that bad. They weren't that expensive. And then I sent the seat belts in. And you know, I told you you get on eBay and uh the price is always a lot different i sent them to safety restore now if i would have sent them to safety restore off of their website i would have ordered two dual stage seatbelt retractor repairs and a crash module reset and that would have set me back about 250 bucks ordering on ebay so it was what was it it was a hundred dollars per seat belt plus about fifty dollars for the crash module on eBay through Safety Restore, I ordered it on there. It was like $29 for the crash module reset and $19 per dual stage seat belt. So, and the end, it ended up being like 60, it was like 60 bucks somewhere around there. And uh, then I had to send it in, so I shipped it UPS and that was $20. And that's with $500 insurance on that. So if my package gets lost, which I know it made it there, uh, I would get $500 to go toward And that would have got me new seat belts and a crash module. Anyways, I was going to try to throw the wrap on here, but I'm going to save that for the next episode. It just A lot of things been going on, and I just haven't been able to do the things I want to do to this. I wanted to get the body work done today, and I don't think that's going to happen. But I want to show you this product review because this is by far probably the nicest and best product that I've ever gotten.
This is the Xtool D8BT, which means Bluetooth. Uh, it comes with a Bluetooth dongle. This displays your voltage that's in your car. If your voltage is too low in your car and you plug this in, this will beep at you to let you know that it's too low that you shouldn't be using this. This dongle also has a flashlight on it built in so that you can find your OBD2 port. Which is very handy because I use this to find your mom's OBD2 port and I plugged it in and this thing detected all kinds of codes. Emotional damage, drinking problems. The most shocking one was, why do I like to watch on rec? I didn't know that was a problem. Anyways, I reset them all. We know they'll be back. I'm gonna tell you right now, the bumper to bumper on that was way out. Long time ago. Anyways, this thing does bi-directional controls. It has lots, lots of reset features, more than any other scanner I have. And... It is very nice. This thing is basically an Android tablet. You can go to the internet on it. You can take pictures. It has a camera on the back. You can do screenshots. You can do video uh, recordings on here. I have some screenshots on here from my brother's truck because I was going, well, I just took another screenshot. I didn't mean to do that. So here, as you can see, my brother's takes up the whole page with all the codes in his avalanche that I'm gonna be working on here soon. That's okay. But you can attach uh, multiple attachments to this thing. You can put an endoscope on this thing and use it as an endoscope. I think that's pretty nifty. There are lots of things that you can do with this. This is probably the most handy tool that I'm gonna have in my arsenal now, currently. So here are all of the reset functions that are on this thing. Oil reset. Key programming is a big one. I have that on other ones, but this thing just makes it a lot nicer. Uh, like instrument cluster, gear match, gear learning, power balance, transport mode, suspension, lots of things that none of my vehicles have, but airbag reset, that's a nifty one. I'm doing automatic uh, updates right now. There's like 74 updates I haven't done. Look how quick this thing goes through. Now, I have high-speed internet. I have to when you're a YouTuber. Like, I have cable. Uh, but it's going through these things lickety-split. It's already done a bunch of them up there. Ooh, diagnosis Lamborghini. We're going to need that. <laughs> Never. Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad it has those features. <laughs> Maybe if it's a Lamborghini Hyundai or a Ferrari Kia, I don't know. Mm. But we will be using this code scanner on the truck currently. Don't have a crash module in it. it was I should have them at the beginning of next week, but crash module, seat belts, all that stuff, I don't have right now. I can put power to the truck, but there's going to be an airbag light. Airbags are not functional without the crash module in there, so don't have to really worry about that stuff right now. So I don't know what kind of price they're going to give me for you guys, discount-wise. I can tell you right now, if you order it on Amazon, it's 769 bucks. this model exactly. And then there is a little coupon thing underneath it. If you click it, you get an extra $40 off of that. So you're going to get it for close to $700. So this thing does ECU coding, bi-directional controls. There's over 31 reset features. It does full diagnostics, so every system, it does them. It comes with three years free updates. So that means like right now what I'm doing is updating these manufacturer uh, software on here. You can update that for up to three years, which is very nice. I don't know anything about this, but it says it has CAN FD protocol. So it works on 2020 and up GM products. I don't know what that is, but I don't have anything that new. That's why. All right, some tech specs on this tablet itself. It is powered by a 1.8 gigahertz quad core processor, 64 gigabytes of memory on it. It has Android 5.1.1. It has a 10,000 milliamp battery built in, so it can last up to nine hours. It has auto VIN searching. I've, I've used that and it works every time. I just hit auto. You can get manual and then look through down through the manufacturers and stuff like that. Auto is a lot easier to use. You just hit it, it detects the VIN, brings up the car, and you're good to go. And if you have a business, this thing, you can generate reports with it. You can print them, and you can send them by email. 
Uh, this thing's hooked to my Wi-Fi, so it has full internet capabilities. I can watch YouTube videos on it if I want to. If I want to watch Unwrecked, I can watch Unwrecked on it. If you want to pay 700 some dollars to watch Unwrecked, you can do it. Who is this guy? Ha! That's when I bought that thing! Right there! It does have a speaker in the back. Man, he's got some moves. I had to turn the quality up so you can see it but Oh! Get it, son! Get it! So on top of all that, this thing is also very robust and strong. I have I dropped it pretty hard already on accident. I don't even know where, what end I dropped it on. It didn't even hardly leave a mark on it. I think I put a scuff on one of the rubber pieces. Okay, I got, I got a little mark down there on the bottom. And then like a scuff back here on the rubber. And, it's, and then it's got the nice, what I really like is this. I can't tell if this is plastic or aluminum. You know how some plastic, it feels like aluminum. It's cold to the touch. Uh, but what's nice about that is you can clip it on your steering wheel or you can set it down on a table like that I like that. I can set this on my steering wheel So it's not sitting on my lap in the way now if you're driving it's not a smart idea But let me go out. I'll run it on my uh, Subaru. I don't think there's any codes on it there I think there might be one for something in climate control. We'll go out there and do that I gotta put I'm putting speakers in that thing now that I put that stereo in and it has the amplifier, the stock speaker just can't handle the bass. I think this thing's very nice. Very nice. All right. Oh, baby. Anyways. Here we go. Oh, it's speakers. So as I was saying, this thing has a little flashlight built in. I don't know if that charges whenever you, uh... Look, now I can see my OBD port. It's so nice. I like that feature a lot. <laughs> Did I get it plugged in? Okay, so now you can see my voltage right there, 12.3. How nice is that? All right, so auto scan. Subaru. Other vehicle. Automatic scan. Now it's going through all the systems right now. Brake control system, nine. Failures, tire pressure monitor. What is going on? Airbag fail. Is this thing hooked up to the right vehicle? So I don't know if I plugged this in or if I haven't had this on since I put the stereo in because I had the battery disconnected. And when you disconnect and reconnect the battery and stuff, it'll sometimes throw a code. And they just, if they're not current, they won't come up on the dash. Um, but it does store it in there. And if you don't clear it out, then as you can see, it's showing me so many codes right now. Okay, well, let, let me get through all this and then I'll show you all the codes that it found. Out of all of this stuff, the only one that really concerns me is the brake control system. <laughs> but uh, engine and transmission are normal. That's a good thing. So let's view the report. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, this has to be from the battery. Wheel sensor signal, wheel sensor signal, um, interrupted en engine convenience. What? G sensor failure? I can't find the G spot. <laughs> all these codes are all basically codes that you will get. Driver's airbag open. Yeah, these are all codes that you'll get whenever you have your battery off or disconnected or you have a low battery. You'll get all kinds of funky codes like this. So let me go back. I'm going to clear all of these. As you can see, they're all coming back normal now. So, yes, a lot of those issues was self-inflicted. Oh, I have no codes. So if you just want one of these things so you can clear out all your codes whenever they're detected, it'll do that. So now I have it in system operation check mode. So this is bi-directional controls. There's injector control, there's alternator control, EGR valve control, uh, actuator on off, fuel pump control, fixed idle ignition timing, and idle speed control, which is this thing has always idled very high. 
when I first started up, so I kind of want to see if I can mess with that. I don't know if I should be running it while I'm doing it, but I'm going to try it. So it does actually work. I thought this was pretty nifty. So I have it on target engine idle speed, and I dropped it to 1,000, and it's below 1,000 right now. Let me go down. Go 900. Let's go down to 800. Do execution. It did just drop the idle. Can I go down below? Oh, I can go down below. wonder if it'll go... Oh, okay, it's only gonna do it while I have it on execution mode. 600, let's see if it do, does that. Yeah, it does. See, this is stuff I can't do with any of my other scanners. This is pretty nifty. I can go down to 500, it won't let me go any lower than that. Let's try it. Oh, I don't like that. Stop. <laughs> That's neat. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is this thing will do what some of those thousand some dollar scanners will do. This thing has pretty much all the features that you could want for in your home garage or in a business. This thing does height, it does all kinds of stuff. Now I'm not that technical, I'm just telling you from my perspective what this thing can do is above my ability. <laughs> So now if you'll excuse me, I need to put some boom booms in this thing. So we're going to get back to the truck on the next episode. Oh my God, I hope they fit. That's what she said. Smash that mother fudging like button. Send me a comment. Let me know what you think. You going to get one of these? I don't know if I have an affiliate code. Maybe I'll make some grub off of that. I don't know. Hit that dislike button if your mom's codes came back. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next episode. Alright. My boy's in a half tuck right now. What are you doing, Stu, man? You showing off the camera? Hmm? You want a chippy, don't you? What if I just bit into one? What was that? You don't like these time? Are we being picky now? What are you doing? I gotta make sure my headphones are charged before vacation. What are you doing? Huh? Huh? Oh, you wanna say bye bye? You wanna say bye to the people? Hmm? That's a no? Okay.